Andrews alongside me, Stephen, we are happy and proud to bring you, and a little sad, the yeah. very last regular home game, uh, regular season home game for uh, the Red Ravens. We're going to give you the women uh, right now, just getting kicked off, uh, and we're going to give you the men's uh, 15 to 20 minutes after the conclusion of the women's game. So uh, today's opponent is Neosho County. They are a Jayhawk Conference foe. We have faced them before. We're familiar with them. Uh, interesting how tonight's game will go. Interesting start time as well. Usually on the weekends we get started a little earlier, but tonight we're uh, the nightcap. So what a nice way to end off a pretty fun and exciting Saturday for hopefully you guys, but also myself and Steven. Myself and Steven were here yeah. for the American football game uh, yep. that happened at 1 o'clock today. Uh, and you will be happy to hear, Red Raven fans, that the uh, Red Raven American football team took care of business uh, what was that score? Fifty nine to zero, I think yes, it was. Yes, sir, Yeah, so fifty nine to zero, they took care of business uh, in a, in American football. If you're not quite certain, uh, that is a beatdown. That is a big win right there. So looking for that as well. And folks, tonight is sophomore night whoop, uh, whoop. for the women's team, and so we're going to call out starting lineups as we see them. But for the most part, we're going to see the sophomores from this team out there on the field as Neosho County has a throw in. They are deep into Red Raven territory, but I know we do have Alessandra Thompson. We have Cheyenne Reed. We have Abigail Moss and Sherry Saad. We have Kaisley uh, Alias. We have Valentina Verguez. We have Ashley Sweat. We have Julia Mullins, and we'll call out any more we probably uh, even have as Katie we Burfitt. see them. You probably even have Katie Burfoot as well. Oh. She's also a sophomore. Yeah, we're going to have to keep an eye out on that. Uh, and you also have a sophomore up here, Dirk. Oh, yeah. Steven, you know. Stephen always likes to sneak in oh, yeah. uh, little bits time. of information that uh, make you go, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, you are in your sophomore year. And and this is twice in one week for me to be at our last home game. Wednesday was volleyball. Tonight is soccer. It is a little bittersweet, honestly. I mean, you yeah. go through the whole season and you go through the ups. You go through the downs uh, with the team. As we see uh, Neosho advancing here, Sherry steps up, and this is going to be a long ball that – is taken care of by our other sophomore, Grace Higgins. I don't think I've called her out, but uh, Neosho still threatening into the box. Sherry gets a boot to it. Good job there. Another good ball going to find Casey. Casey tries to bring it down. That was always going to be a pretty difficult ball. Ashley looks to be in front, and you are right. That is Burfoot out there as well, number 18, our other sophomore. So, dang, Stephen, good job there. Valentina, ooh, good footwork. She brings this one down. She's always had impressive footwork from what I've seen of her so far. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and she has defenders in front of her, but also some teammates in the box. He's what is given to her here. She has a player, Abigail Moskowitz. She brings it in. Oh, wow, nice ball. Somehow gets all the way through. Oh, wow, yeah. That is crazy. I can't believe that got all the way through without a Neosho player uh, getting a boot to it. Abigail, good job by her to battle. And right now, actually, Neosho has the, I think, a very tall player right now at six foot one, and she is a freshman. Interesting. Well, if she is out there now, we'll have to take a look. And uh, if she is, I guarantee she's going to uh, be a threat in the air. No doubt about it, as this ball will go out and over to Neosho County. Neosho County is 3-12 and 12 on the year overall. They are 1-11 and 11 in conference. The Coffeeville Red Ravens come in 12-4-1 and 1 overall and 8-3-1 and 1 in the conference. So yeah. a pretty good year overall. I mean, and, and to be quite honest with you, a very good year overall, but still left to be played this game and then one other. Uh, that, and then we'll see how the playoffs shape up for not only the women's team but men as well. Throw in and looks like we'll have a stoppage. We'll have a foul call and this will be ball over to the Red Ravens and they quickly get in position. I like that. Julia Mullins, yeah. number 23, she is also out there as well. She's a sophomore. She's put in her time. We've gotten familiar with her at left back and then sometimes uh, center back as well. Cheyenne Reed, another one that we've had a really fun time watching. Mm -hmm. She <laughs> she has no yes. problem sliding in and making that hard mm -hmm. tackle whenever uh, it is needed. Uh, her ball goes long and over to Neosho. They're going to get themselves set up, and they're going to send this one down. 
So volleyball last home game was last week, I think. Yes. Uh, they played yesterday, but we do not know the results of that. I did right? hear from one of the players. Uh, they they said that they didn't do good, but in my opinion, they always do good because they always give 110% out there on the court. The, shout out to Layla Felder and the rest of the volleyball team as well, especially my – one of my favorite players to watch, Sarah Madman Matson. But uh, it sounds like they did not get the victory then. Did they not? They did win? not get the victory, okay. but well, they got the victory in our hearts, man. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I got to say about it. I hear it. you. Well, and we'll see how their playoff picture oh, uh, yeah. ends up as well as bodies hit the floor, but really no call, just a little bit of physicality there. Nice one yeah. from Neosho County. She's going to send that one down, but Sherry has no problem cleaning that one up. Does it stay in? No, it does not. Good footwork there by the Flagsman. Yeah, the line judge had to come up big there with that stop. Oh, yeah. He did. Uh, you noted the color of their shirts, as we always do. We kind of make yep. fun of them just a little bit. Uh, and, you know, we figured that at nighttime it, they're going to be easy to see out there. So oh, yeah. strategically speaking, that's a really good color yes, uh, choice on their part. Julia Mullins comes over, clears that one momentarily with Neosho back on it. No, we don't have it. No, you don't have any female soccer players in our uh, nine o'clock class, do you? No, we do not. We just have Harvey. Yep, Harvey and it. Sergio, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Harvey and Sergio. Uh, yep, none in that class there. I would like to give a shout out though to Zidane Mutlu, or AKA Mr. Energy. Mm. He gave me a nice cut. Yeah, he is also uh, he's talented in a lot of ways. Yes. Uh, gave you a haircut, looking nice, man. Looking mm -hmm. nice. Uh, Sherry to Cheyenne, and Cheyenne tries to find Ashley. Still trying to find her. As Abigail Moss in the middle. This is Katie Burfoot coming over. Or no, sorry, that was Julia Mullins. And she actually is going to be giving a throw in here. Good IQ play by her. <laughs> you can see the size of the binoculars that are up yes. here. Uh, Steven takes his job very seriously. Oh, yes. Binoculars so we can. Yeah. Well, and, and on, <laughs> yeah, so as Burfoot fights for this, it this point in time, it's still sunny outside, but there is a shadow over the field, so it's kind of hard to see the numbers sometimes. As, uh, yes. Valentina is going to give chase, and Grace cuts that one out. Ball sent down. Neosho cuts it out. And how long have you been teaching at Caney, Dirk, if I may ask? I have never taught at Caney. Oh, not Caney, Cockerville. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years this year, actually. Oh, and that's going to – wow. Mm. I think he's playing advantage there, but, yeah, he's going to go ahead and – no, he's not. That is interesting. I, uh. I, I imagine Burfoot wants that call right there. It seemed as if the Neosho player had come all the way through her, but uh, I guess he did get the ball as well, and so referee mm -hmm. deemed it uh, a good play, and we do play on here. But, yeah, ten years this year, actually. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate that. It's uh, It's been interesting 10 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As Coach Shiki is up, and he is pointing and yelling at someone. Going to have a stoppage of play here. Going to have a foul call. Going to have a free kick for Neosho. Gives them a chance to get out of their half. Seems like we've been down on that side in mm -hmm. their half for a long time now. Yeah. Finally transitioning, maybe getting some play here uh, in – the Red Raven defensive half, but I mean, a very like that's the kind of the way you want to go though in this sort of situation. If you're the Red Ravens, you want to be on that side and not back on your own turf. Yeah, no doubt about it. Get it's it. <laughs> turf, literally. Uh, Riley Palmer, number six. I don't think I've called her out yet. Sorry about that, but she steps up big as she always does in her mm -hmm. right back position uh, or left back sometimes and makes that play. Neosho plays it out and it'll be over for a Coffeeville throw in. It is Palmer that will come over. And, again, once again, we are in the attacking half, mm -hmm. back where we need to be, 0-0 zero, zero score line, almost 10 minutes into it. And that will play back out and over to the Red Ravens. Got to give a shout-out to our ball boy tonight as well. I think he's a sophomore too. So mm. uh, if not, we'll give him a shout-out anyways. Ooh, nice header, really, trying to find someone going forward. That was Valentina, I think. Now, as you can tell, if you all are watching the live stream right now, you can tell by the flags on, over here that they are blowing pretty big. They really are. And so during the American game, uh, American football game earlier today, uh, it was a really big factor in the passing game uh, and then also the kicking game as well. There were certain times when 
the punter would punt the ball into the air, and it literally just stuck in there. So, hey, Steven, let's watch this kickoff right here. Let's see how the ball oh, yeah. uh, flies. Wind in her face. Yeah, to see how it kind of hangs up there, hangs up, hangs up. That was the yep. same thing in uh, the American football game. Today. Yeah. And that football shape just a little different, too, so it kind of catches the wind uh, in a different way as that ball's going to go out to Neosho. Jared Shickey, head coach. Yes, He's in his ninth year. Selinka uh, Hamel as well, his assistant coach. They've done a great job so far. Like I said, 12-4-1 overall. Definitely a great record. And a great record in our conference as well. Yeah, 8-3-1, and one, and that's always a very competitive conference. So even though you're happy with 8-3, and three, man, I'm sure they would like to have a couple of those back. But here we go. We play on. Neosho plays it out from the back. And uh, how did the women do at Butler? You know, I am not sure. We'd have to go back and take a look at that. As Kaisley brings this one in. Ooh, Ooh. nice move. And she's being held back. Uh, and she will still fight for it. In all honesty, if she would have went to ground there, she might have gotten that call, but she does not. She stays up on her feet. Got to give her a lot of respect for that, but she made a nice move on that player. Had the, the turn and everything, but mm -hmm. just got held back slightly. Wow, that was exciting. Indeed. It's a really good move. And there she is again disrupting the throw-in. There's Katie Burfoot. There's Julia Mullins. Grace comes over. Cheyenne's going to put a big one into that, and she has a wind at her back. You know what, if, if that ball is actually on target mm -hmm. uh, and it takes a couple of big bounces like that, that's a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. It could be a lot of trouble. And if Butcher were here, Mr. Butcher, Baker, Candlestick, mm -hmm. Maker, if he was here, he would definitely have already commented on the wind. So let's comment on the wind once again. Yeah, if you can get one into the jet stream, if you catch that uh, goalkeeper out, yeah, that could be a quick one right mm -hmm. there. It really could be. Goal kick. Good play there, and she finally gets a call. She was probably looking for that earlier. Number 18, Katie Burfoot from Winnipeg, Canada, 5'4", sophomore. We've had the pleasure of having uh, a lot of Canadian players over the years. Yeah. Sherry uh, as well currently. CCC, even though we're just a... Small college, just right in the middle of the United States, Coffeyville, Kansas. We actually do have a very diverse uh, campus. Yeah, we like to broaden our horizon. Yeah, and I mean, you really can there as far as, yeah, you might just think, oh, Kansas, what am I going to get? Even just the soccer teams are really uh, good examples of that. As we see a free kick here, Cheyenne's going to take it. She's going to put her left foot into it. Top of the box, good head in. Oh. Wow, that was really good. Yeah. Any closer, if she would have been any closer to the goal, she might have been able to just put that into the back of the net. Mm -hmm. uh, far out like that takes some real skill, but wow, Ashley Sweat, good job. Uh, just putting that one in there. Merritt Island, Florida. Over the years, she's been a very good, uh, I would say, number nine. She's even played in the midfield. She can play just about anywhere up front. And if you ask her to go to the back and maybe even play goalie, I'm sure she yeah. would do that uh, as well. Throw in for the Red Ravens. This is Palmer again. This is just going to go right back over to Sherry. Sherry, wow, she's going to open up Kaisley there. What a great pass. She has options. and She's going to have to make it quickly, though. Oh, wow, again, a lot of skill there. <laughs> mm -hmm. She is not holding back tonight. We saw the skill on the turn. We saw the skill right there. That is really impressive uh, from Casey. And she is uh, from Carthage, Missouri. Mm. Looks like Cheyenne will – nope, this is going to be Sherry. So her right-footed ball will be swinging in. But, again uh, – Steven, the, the wind, the way it is, I yes. wonder what her thinking is right here. I wonder if she wants to just maybe try to sneak it in. Yeah, right now it is it is 80 degrees, okay. and the wind right now I think is still at a very fast uh, 24 miles per hour. Wow. Yeah, 24 mile an hour wind, that is something. And she's having trouble getting that ball to just stay in place. I wonder if she'll try to go for goal here. Ball is up, and... 
She might have been. She might have been. And I don't blame her. Mm -hmm. uh, not one bit because it's going to be in swinging anyhow because it's coming from right leg. But with the wind the way it is, that's just an extra push. Yeah. Uh, right there. As looking out onto the crowd, we have a pretty good uh, crowd so far. Like I said, the American football game was earlier. Red Ravens crushed that one 59 to 0. Yep. This one is brought out, and Abigail Moss gives chase. Katie Burfoot steps up. Neosho passing it well. But in there, I just jinxed him. Gray steps up. Back to Katie. Red Ravens keeping a lot of possession. Looking for that counter whenever they can as well. And I think that's where we could really uh, do some damage. Mm -hmm. Getting the ball in the midfield, you know, on like a stolen pass or an interception. Uh, and just really quick passes down the field. And finding those streakers on both sides as well as looks like Mullins will throw this one in. We do have a substitution here. That'll be Abigail Moss coming out, number seven. Durham, England, 5'9". On will be Alia. Alia, another sophomore. Casablanca, Morocco. She had a... I think she's on a two-game goal-scoring streak. I know I just mm. jinxed her right there. You're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> I'm actually urging you to get some more, Alia. But, yeah, I think she's on a two-game uh, scoring streak, which is really big for the Red Ravens. Got a lot of contributions from uh, different players yep. throughout the season, and, and getting her on track is big. She was a second-team all-conference, I'm, I'm almost certain, uh, last season. So, yeah, she's a big part of uh, what we've got going here as – she drops back into the more of a midfield role. Katie comes over. Julia, wow, what a good play. Very good play. She's still going. I'll be careful there. Referee could have maybe given her a foul for sliding a little too much, but uh, does not. We have a throw in, but really good defensive play by Julia to get a toe on that uh, ball there. Ashley puts it up, and this is a great ball. Will Valentina be able to get to it? Yes, she will. You know, show even better with the defense. Step up, and pretty sure that was Grace. And <laughs> she wants the call there. Who wouldn't want the call? She doesn't get it. Ball over to Neo Show County. Yeah, so tries to switch field here, unable to. Katie Burfoot does exactly what uh, Shiki wants her to do there. Come over to that side of the field, play clean up. She does so. Kaisley has it. She sizes the defender up, Julia. That's a lot of contact there. Yes. Alia definitely positioned her body in a way where uh, she knew she was going to get that contact. She was okay with that uh, because she also knew she would more than likely uh, get that foul call. So she wins mm -hmm. it for the Red Ravens. She's just going to go ahead and take this. Katie comes up. Katie takes a shot, but it is not going to bother the goalkeeper at all. That's going to mm -hmm. keep on rolling. Roll on. Yeah, that might go all the way to the fence, actually. Uh, the wind, definitely a factor. And like I mm -hmm. said, Shiki's going to want to utilize that. But 28 minutes left. In this first half, still no score. Still really no shots on goal. Still no corners. So the game has been played in the middle of the field for the most part. Possession kept by Coffeyville. Alia Skies for that one. Good job. Mm -hmm. The Red Ravens have had most of the possession. We've spent most of the time uh, in their attacking half. But, you know, shows, shows signs of life every once in a while. Cheyenne will play this back to Sherry. They'll regroup. Sherry puts a boot into it, and she, oh, wow. That's mm. really, honestly, a good ball there. It uh, was a good look, yes, indeed. Turf-wise, I mean, that ball is always just going to, like, gain speed and keep the speed and keep on going faster. And it's just hard for anybody to catch up with that if they didn't already have somewhat of a head start. But yeah. good look and, honestly, good vibes from the team so far. It took a weird bounce off, off of looked like Katie's foot. Yeah, it did. 
It's sometimes going to happen like that. And there's Bur Burfoot putting her body on the line. She mm -hmm. does that really well. Great physicality. High throw in and... I think Katie's going to get called for just uh, being on the back a little too much there. Yep. In basketball, that would be considered an over-the-back oh, foul. Over-the-back foul. You are exactly right, my friend. Climbed up the back of her for the most part. So this will be a free kick. Neosho will position players into the box. Kaisley is there. Katie is tracking back. It's into the box. Not a bad ball. Wow, dangerous. Someone's going to have to make a play on this. Defenders do enough, and Julia cleans it. Good job there. Wow. Thought someone was going to get ahead to it early, mm -hmm. but nobody did. Took a dangerous bounce. Thompson, though, is going to have to give some credit to her defensive mm -hmm. uh, backs there as far as they cleaned it up before she even had to think twice about it. Really dangerous ricochet. She comes out. Ball's put in. Oh, wow. Good save by yes. Cheyenne. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Thompson comes out. She was kind of in between there. She made that decision. Don't blame her for making that decision. However, ball ricochets, ends up with an Aneosho County player. She shoots it in. Cheyenne tracks back. Wow, that's the – That's just good teamwork there and good communication there by the Ravens. Yeah, that's to just, true. Because maybe even Cheyenne could possibly become a goal, like a goal <laughs> goalkeeper. She could probably do whatever she wants yeah. as well. But, yeah, good communication, calling people out, letting them know where you're at on the field. That is the biggest play of the game so far for both sides. Neosho getting that clear chance, but then also the Red Ravens cleaning it up. And here we go, Neosho filling it just a little bit. Julia gets ahead to it. Good job. Neosha tries to get ahead, and i just not able to catch up with that one. Or, nah, they're going to go ahead and call. And it looks like Alia got the call because she's the one with their hands uh, up in the air like, yeah. what did I do? But, yeah, the referee saw too much contact there. Yeah. And this is honestly a really good spot for Neosha to be in. It's dead center. But then you got to think again as the wind will play, possibly play a, fa play it a factor. It might. It might. You're exactly right. And it holds up just enough. Palmer gives chase. Good job by her to put her body on the line there. But, yeah, so really with the, with the wind in your face, it almost favors you in that situation because it is going to hold up. It does give your players time. And this is an example of that. Really good ball into the box. Not a bad job by that player to actually get into the position mm -hmm. to put the head on it, but just no precision on the aim. Luckily for Coffeyville, will just be a goal kick. 21 minutes gone, 24 minutes left. Abigail Moss comes in as Katie Burfoot comes out. Ah, good job there, good job. And if it's just too bad that people can't get a visual of mm. you with these large <laughs> binoc binoculars. I mean, guys, these aren't just like regular binoculars. These are basically, whoops, basically like the the length of my forearm, more or less. Uh, and they don't act. They're not actually binoculars. There's only one uh, thing that you look through. It's just an ocular, I think. Uh, or a monocular. Yeah, monocular, binocular, yeah, monocular, I guess so. And as we ramble, the Red Ravens are actually making it downfield. Ashley tries to find Kaisley, but that is still going to be a good result for the Red Ravens because they are marching down the field. Julia's going to come and throw this one in. She has options. She has Abby. She has Ashley. She has Kaisley and even Alia's coming around. And that's her, where she'll go. Nice turn. Okay. Ooh, okay. okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. We need a little spark, mm -hmm. a little inspiration up front. A little bit of flash. Never goes never goes too wrong. And th that, oh. That was good defense. It, w it was good defense. I will give him credit. It definitely was. Yeah, and, you know, as long as that flash doesn't get away from uh, the fundamentals, as long mm -hmm. as you choose – uh, at the right times, and she definitely did there. Oh, wow. That was a good ball in. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was excellent. I think that was Riley Palmer that sent that one in. Topeka, Kansas. Riley Palmer, and that one goes out and back over to the Red Ravens. A little frustration there from Neosho County. 
understandably. Mm -hmm. This is a throw in. Abigail brings it down, but Neo Show adds. It's going to be ball back over to Coffeyville. Neo Show not making it easy for the Red Ravens here on this throw in. Hazley wanting a call there. A lot of contact. She's uh, pleading, but will not get the decision. Throw in for the Red Ravens. Abigail, nice little flick. It oh, I kind of like Kaisley. that. I like that. Yeah, that was a nice bit of skill there. The ball is going towards Neosho now. Yeah, so substitution. Wow, the wind really picked up right there. If you if you could see the flag, or if you could see the uh, the camera, or the uh, the crowd noise microphone, that thing is whipping. It is yes. whipping. It is nice outside, but uh, very windy. As Alia tries to battle, she's still going to battle. You know, so player. Great weight on that ball. She floated that thing right mm -hmm. above the head of the Red Raven defender. Got right through. Julia battles, but Neosho gets the better of that battle. However, out of bounds and will be back over to Cockerville. Yeah, so, Dirk, I think this may have been the... I don't know if the... Because I'm, like, I'm a young guy, and, like, I think, it, like... For volleyball, in my opinion, since I, since our last home game was Wednesday, and it was a pink out night, and and there was a strange uh, thing that happened there. Someone became an honorary member. <laughs> yeah. So as something gets worked out over here, we will go ahead and tell this story. There's a stoppage, and it looks as if the Neo Show coach is asking some questions. They'll get together. Uh, but yeah. So that was Wednesday night, correct? Yes, it was. So Wednesday night. Uh, the last home game, regular season for volleyball. W they went ahead and <laughs> Shiki, uh, we'll get this worked out. Yeah, Shiki is arguing. Neosho County is arguing. But, yeah, so Stephen was inducted, you could say, uh, as an honorary member of the volleyball team. Uh, he is the voice of the volleyball team on KUSN 98.1. So, uh, last this last season, if you would have tuned in to volleyball, you would have heard him giving you the play-by-play. -play. Mm -hmm. As the ref seems to be giving Shiki an explanation, uh, I don't think anything's gonna happen overall. But mm -hmm. we need some, we need a spy down there. We need a walkie-talkie yeah. down there or something. But either way, it gets worked out, and Julia Mullins is going to throw this one in. But yeah, an honorary member of the team. You've been there all season. You've uh, given them support. They appreciate that support. Uh, and, yeah, like I said, we'll see where they go with uh, their playoff run. And, guys, anytime you want to keep up with sports, ooh, Red Raven style as Alia keeps this one in. Ooh, she would have gotten around that defender there. That would have been it. Abigail, good job by her to hustle. I think we're going to get a handball call. Yeah, that was that was right. So, yeah, redravenathletics.com. Mm -hmm. Redravenathletics.com. That's going to take you to all sports, Red Ravens, schedules, stats, stories. Mm -hmm. Nicknames, possibly. <laughs> Grace Higgins has this one. She finds Julia. Julia tries to send it up to Kaisley, but not quite on the same page there. But I... Can definitely see, and you guys can also see what she was thinking there. She was looking for that yeah. run uh, into the box on the left-hand side. Trying to create something as it looks like action on the bench for Coffeyville. Three different players getting up and ready. Imagine they'll be coming in shortly to possibly close out uh, this first half. It's really gone by fast. Yes. Uh, only 17 minutes left in this first half as Abigail... Battles, battles, battles. Still does. Gets it to Alia. Good job. Alia finds Kaisley. Tries to lay it off. Was yeah. Going for a give and go there. But Neosho has other plans as they are now uh, on the go. Julia steps up. Cheyenne cleans it up. Julia controls it. Ooh, nice. Honestly, nice control there. Grace. Abigail. 
Almost made a soccer sandwich there. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle as Abigail. Good job by her. She gets it. Oh, and she wanted that. Yeah, she wanted it reversed. And she was exactly right. She was trying to say, hey, reverse it, reverse it. But ultimately, Red Ravens get it. Thompson gets it. Thompson has options. Reed will size up her defender. She'll get around her. She's got that athleticism. Thrown off her path just a little bit, but it is deemed legal. Out of bounds and over to Neosho County. The Panthers. Uh, the current KJCCC East women's standings, number five Butler is in first place. 15-2-1 in the league. Coffeyville second, 12-4-1. Johnson County 8 and 9 in the league, KCK 5 7 and 2, and Neosho at 3 and 12 as excellent ball played. Valentina making her way down. She has Alia. She's going to find her. Alia trying to go up against three defenders, just unable to get through. And Valentina unable to keep that ball in. We do have a substitution waiting for the Red Ravens. That will come later. Ashley Sweat, good job by her to steal that from Neosho County. She makes her way down to the end line and wins a corner kick. Yes, she does. Nice job by the sophomore to step in and make that play happen. Most of this game has been played in the midfield, so to see a corner kick here, uh, actually the second corner kick, the first one was taken by Sherry. Uh, looks like this one will be taken by Julia. And that is shy, and not a shy area. That is Katie Burfoot there. Now she's coming in. Oh, okay. She comes in for Grace. She had come out for Abigail. Burfoot back in. So one, two, three, four, five, or so six Red Ravens into the box. Ball is up. It's a pretty good one. Oh, she was there. Cheyenne was there. Kaisley, ball knocking around. It is not cleared. Still not cleared. Julia tries to put that one into the box. It's broken up. Wow, wow. Yeah, that was a really good corner mm -hmm. into it. Neosho County, though, doing just enough. Mm -hmm. Throw in goes long and over the head of just about everyone. Alia picks it off and she, oh wow, cleverly gets it to Ashley. Ashley down and back to Alia. Alia sizes up her defender. That's Burfoot there, good control. Good footwork, honestly. Yeah, very good footwork, and she finds or tries to find Valentina. This will be a throw-in. Coach Chicky getting his substitutions ready. Looks like I see Tata. Let's see who number 10 is. That is Natalia, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's Natalia. I think it is Tata and maybe Veronica. Let me check. But here's a nice bit of movement into the box here. Back to Palmer. She puts it in, and Alia brings it down. Alia. Oh wow. Well, look, well it kind of looked like it, wow. she got tripped up in the back in the back as well. Yeah, she did just a little bit. I'm sure there was uh, some contact. But that would have been one of the most athletic moves mm -hmm. I've ever seen uh, if she would have been able to pull that one off. That was just really good play uh, from the Red Ravens, inspiring late into this first half. It would have been like a, that would have been like a somersault right there. Kind of like a, uh, a a definite scissor kick, mm. half somersault. Or kind a cartwheel. Of, uh, a lot of movement there, a lot of movement toward the goal, you know, generating that power on the kick. So here we go again, though. Neosho really just can't keep possession. They can't get into the defensive half of the Red Ravens. They're constantly having to uh, defend, which will 
At some points, you would think wear him out as this ball goes in and over the head of Valentina. Valentina cut in, but Alia thought she was going to stay out. Number 11 and number 19 for the Tigers are coming in for number 9. And let's see. I think that's it from what I've seen so far. Goal kick up and finds Burfoot's head. Valentina will give chase. She has a defender, and the defender will do a good job of botting her off that ball. But <laughs> there's Ashley stepping up, and now well, that stayed in. Okay, that ball stays in. Red Ravens looking to run. Moss to Burfoot. Burfoot back to Reed. Reed to Sherry. Sherry. Oh, wow. What a pass. My goodness. And that is Ooh. excellent skill there from Kaisley. She has that in her pocket. She sizes him up. She's going to try to make a move. Oh, she keeps it. My goodness. She's eating him up over there. You know, I almost got a... I almost went to Neo Show for cross country. Oh, that's interesting, man. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and that is headed out of bounds and over to Coffeeville. Ten minutes left uh, and some change here in this first half. We're finally seeing some shots on goal from the Red Ravens. Still nothing in the back of the net just yet. Burfoot squares it up. Neo Show County, not a good clearance. Sweat. Ooh, wow. If Alia was mm -hmm. a little bit closer to that, that could have been something. But good job by the goalkeeper to come out and take care of that one. And then again, also, like, maybe not even the smartest way, too, because, like, Tata, she can just, like, come in and just steal and just bang. Yeah, she is uh, quick when it comes to that. She steals it, and before you know it, she is in the box. And looks like she's going to be one of the ones. Uh, and number nine as well. In. So that's Veronica. A trio of subs for the last 10 minutes or so. Indubitably. And uh, it's always interesting in, in soccer as far as like, because the substitution, it, it's really up to the referee to let it go. Mm. Like in basketball, they go to the table and the next dead ball, it's like, uh, you know, you come in. Football, you go in after each play. Baseball, it's a little more formal, you know. But soccer, it's like it's just up to the ref. So yeah. that's kind of weird. But we finally see the change. And uh, we'll see Valentina go out. We'll see, I think, Alia go out. Uh, and then maybe Ashley. For, again, Natalia, Tata, and uh, Veronica. Now, those three are ba are a really tri big old trio. Say that again? Those three are definitely a trio. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are going to be a handful for the Neosho County defenders, that is for sure, as uh, this ball is played out to Julia. Julia up and tries to find Natalia, but unable to. Cheyenne all the way back to her. Sherry to Katie. Katie operating in that midfield role. Gets it to, tries to get it to Veronica. Veronica gives her a thumbs up, tells her good pass, but... And indeed it was. I mean, it was a good look to find your your own teammate, but then it just it just went out of bounds. Well, and, you know, it had a lot of pace. Uh, mm. It had a lot of uh, curve on it as well. Yeah. I uh, kind of rode up on her body a little bit off her chest and just kind of had a bounce. Hard to control those, I imagine. As good job there by Kaisley to use her body to get that one. Tata, the smallest on the field, but, man, she's so strong. Always finding ways to possess the ball. Kaisley, good job to chest that one down. Ball sent in, finds Tata. She's going to give a chase. Uh, and she does. She wins a corner for the Red Ravens. Way to go, Like Tata. I said, she is always using just, you know, her, her body and, and leverage to somehow and, make plays yeah. for the Red Ravens. And she just knows exactly where to be at the right time. Yeah, that's a good point. Just simply put, she knows where to be at the right time. You're exactly right. And right now, where uh, she needs to be is – Kicking this corner. She will be. Burfoot is moving around just a bit. You have Veronica coming to the near post. And it goes out to Natalia. 
Neosho defends, still defending. Just a two Tata. And to Natalia. Wow, that Back was Back to Tata. Really good teamwork there. That one, two, very clever, and it wins them a another, another cor corner yeah. kick. Yes, sir. We've seen a lot of corner kicks for the Ravens already. Yeah, in the last like five or ten minutes, we've mm -hmm. seen uh, more during that time span than the rest of the half so far. So as the time ticks, we pick up in intensity, and that's a good thing. Ball low, and once again, another corner kick. It's interesting. Man, Sherry is right there. I would love mm -hmm. to see her maybe play it short or... Okay, now we, now we do see it. Now we're going to play it back. Left-footed shot. Oh, wow, oh. they had Cheyenne. Yes, they did. But, but now they give it back to Katie. We will have it. We will have it, and Julia puts it up. Oh, Oh. That would have bounced a little higher. You just never know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what a good job by Mullins just to honestly put that on target. I think that may have been Burfoot. I think it was 23, but yeah. they'll tell me about it on Monday. They'll let yep. me know. They'll be like, Derek, you got my name wrong. And then I'll have to. <laughs> I get that all the time for volleyball as well. Yeah. And, I mean, hey, it's just an honest mistake. Yeah. But uh, it looks one there's way, Burfoot, though. Good, good way to get down there on the turf and just – Get the ball back for the yeah, Ravens. That's true. Ooh, a lot of body there. A lot of contact, but no call. Cheyenne's going to want to go ahead and give that contact back to her. Yeah. She tracks all the way out. She did her job. Stops that attack. Stops that counter. And we talked about Tata and her thievery. There she is. Who do you think has the biggest, like, the biggest boot for the Ravens Ooh. on the women's side? Ooh. Someone's going to get mad either way. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> They may I think, kick you. Well, and that would be the worst. Oh, um, yeah. You know, I, I hadn't seen them all take free kicks. You know, only certain ones do. Uh, I hadn't been to a lot of practices, so I hadn't really seen them all, like I said, you know, actually go through something like that. But it seems like Cheyenne and uh, Sherry mm. have pretty big boots. I mean, I imagine uh, Thompson and Burns do as well since they're goalies and they mm -hmm. kick those long kicks uh, a lot. But, I mean, some of those strikers, I'm sure, can put a good win oh, yeah. it, uh, as well. Ollie uh, uh, and some of those. And this ball floats up and will score it out to Neosho as we have less than five minutes left to play in this wow. first half. <laughs> That's a little too much contact, and the Neosho player would like Julia to know mm. about it. <laughs> But no laughing matter is this free kick for Neosho County in a really dangerous spot, honestly. If it were somewhat closer, they'd probably go ahead and take that. But they like this position here. It's on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. Alessandra sets up her defense and gets herself set up as well. Looks like Julia's going to be the lone defender. Or no, that's Abigail, the lone defender in the wall. Ah, she's just going to go right for it and... Uh, Never going to really, yeah, never really going to really uh, trouble Alessandra. But in the American football game, yes, that was good. That was three points right there. Uh, Sherry, he's going to take this one quickly. Riley, Sherry once again. Yeah, I mean, Sherry, not only has Sherry got a big boost, she's very accurate as well. Yes. Uh, Cheyenne, too, I think it's probably between those two. But I'm sure they'll let me know about it as... This ball squirts out, up, and nah, that's a pretty big boot right there, Steven. Yes, indeed. Kaisley trying to give chase. Veronica tries to bring it down. Neosho battling just as well in the last bit of this first half. Looks like there may have been a foul called. Yeah, the Neosho player will finally get that see. call. Or no, actually, so she did not get the call. Uh, the Red Raven player... Got it, and it will be a free kick from, honestly, pretty far out, but never know what they might do with it. And I think that was number 22 that got involved with it. Abigail Moss unable to bring that down, but Tata gets to it. Tata once again. Uh, she's going to, yeah, and she's going to argue that that was shoulder to shoulder, and it, and it really was. It, yeah. But. I mean, you got to, like, speak sometime, you know. She, you're right. You do got to go ahead and plead your case whenever you can. She's yeah. just so strong. Mm -hmm. uh, for how 
I don't even want to say, you know, she's little by any means, but she, yeah, she's one of the smaller ones out there. But she's man, small but mighty. She is really strong. Yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, and that Neo Show defender just uh, figured that out right there as just Mullins put that puts that up into the air. It's up in the air. Cheyenne, Natalia, and there she is once again. Ball out and over to Neosho County. Two minutes left in this first half. It looks as if we will go uh, in scoreless. Which honestly sounds like a good thing too for us and also for Neosho because they're thinking, thank goodness they haven't scored on us yet. Or Yeah, home team, you know, you uh, wonder about the crowd and the momentum. Mm -hmm. You're right. Uh, plus the, the win the way it is too. Neosho is going to come out with that uh, in their favor. Uh, I, I think 0-0 is probably fair. You know, I don't think either team has really dominated per se, uh, even though we've kept a lot of possession mm -hmm. and been in our attacking half for the most part. Uh, we have not created just tons of chances. I know Coach Shiki will probably talk about that uh, at halftime, trying to find ways to uh, create those chances. This will be a throw in for Neosho County with one about 15 or so left. Tata, wow, she could. Oh, she wow. might be on the list for boots mm. as well. That was a pretty good one. And goalkeeper comes out, has to, scoops it up, and we're less than a minute left, folks. Gonna find her. Oh, well, no. Sherry steps up. Good job. 30 seconds left. You know, so really in no hurry, so I can more or less let you know their mind yeah. frame at the moment. Not too terribly upset, just to go ahead and let it play out as Julia sends this one up and out. The you know, show player is going to have to give a little bit of chase. Now it's 14 seconds left for her to get this throw in and maybe another shot on goal. But no, <laughs> doesn't appear like there's any urgency at all. I guess I don't blame him. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, uh, two and one. So good first half, mm -hmm. uh, but not a great first half uh, from the Red Ravens. Steven and I will take a 15-minute break, which is the exact same amount of time uh, as the halftime there. 0-0 zero, zero scoreline. We'll be back in a flash. See you then.
Welcome back for the second half, live here from Veterans Memorial Stadium in Cockerville, Kansas. My name is Eric Andrews, alongside Steven. We are here for sophomore night, Red Ravens soccer against Neosho County. First half saw some chances, but uh, none go into the back of the net for either team. We've had a 0-0 scoreline as the Red Ravens start off this second half with possession as ball goes out and over or will stay with the Red Ravens. We'll yep. call out starting lineups for this second half as we see them. Sophomore night tonight, like I said earlier, most sophomores starting tonight. Uh, we do see Kat Burns replacing Ollie Thompson in goal. She is a sophomore as well. Uh, we do see Veronica out there. We see Alia. We are watching, I think, Grace and Tata. Now we see Veronica. This one here to Katie. Katie over to Riley Palmer. We also see Sherry. Yep, very good. Sherry has the ball now. She's going to put... Oh, wow, that's a, there's a deflection off the Neosho player, but it falls for Veronica. Her foot. Or no, that's actually Grace Higgins. She puts that one out of bounds. She apologizes to her teammates, but we will play on. Neosho would throw in. Looks like Natalia is over on the far side. Looks like Julia Mullins is in as well. Cheyenne Reed. I think we'll round out uh, this starting five, or starting 11 uh, for this second half. Neosho County with a throw in. This ball is up and into the stratosphere, which still we see a very strong wind out here, Steven. Mm -hmm. So Red Ravens will have to battle that this time around. But, however, some of those passes, you can use the wind to your advantage to just kind of hang up there as Alia has a runner in the middle. Had her, had her, had her, but was not able to get her. Veronica now finally tries it, but just way too late. Yeah. Uh, Tata roaming in the middle, basically all by herself there. Should have been able to find her, but unable to. And Neosho gets this one downfield. But there's Cheyenne Reed, and she starts the attack. No reason to not just keep going here. She'll take on two. She'll take on three. And she might just save this one, did she? No, they're going to go ahead and call that one out. But that just uh, that play right there pretty much embodies everything that Cheyenne Reed right, is right there. She steps up, makes a defensive play. She leads the run all the way down. She has a heavy touch, but then almost hustles just enough to make up for it. Unable to but really good going forward. Ultimately, a goal kick for Neosho County. Gotta shut the door there, it's a little echoey. Yeah, oh, oh, okay, I got you, yeah, good job, good call there by Steven, my uh, right-hand man. Like we said, he's a sophomore as well, so whoop, whoop. we'll go ahead and celebrate uh, sophomore night for him. You're just banking on all these sophomore nights. Oh, nice oh, yeah. play, nice play. Ooh. Could have gotten it back to her, wasn't able to. Neosho County still playing great defense. Shot finally taken, deflection, and a good bounce for Neosho there. Right into the hands of the goalkeeper. She will take her time. She will send her team down as they do not want a repeat of what happened in the first half, which is a lot of possession for the Red Ravens in the Neosho defensive half. I could not agree more. Well, if you don't agree, then you're you're not going to be able to be a part of this broadcast, right? That's just oh darn. You sign the contract just to yep. always agree with what I say. Yeah. <laughs> this ball is not cleared out properly, and this is going to force Sherry to make the most of a bad ball there. But she had her teammates back. Great hustle to turn that one in to a throw in versus a corner kick. Yep, with five minutes almost gone by already with some change right now with 40 minutes and 47 seconds. Both teams looking for a goal. This is Neo Show, and she takes that one out of touch and over. This will be Cat Burns. Getting her paws on it. Set out the first half. Or no, I guess that'll be uh, maybe offsides call. Yeah, she set out the first half, so Ollie, mm -hmm. the other sophomore goalkeeper, could uh, get some time. They have shared time for the most part this year. Both goalkeepers very solid. I think any team would uh, be very happy to have either one on their squad. Uh, Coach Shiki has the delight to have both as this one is a 
throw in and then it's sent into the box. Grace Higgins steps up and gets it to Natalia. Natalia just looking to run. Great close down though by Neosho County, not letting that happen. This is a layoff. Burfoot gives it to Tata. Cat is going to try to catch up to this, but she will not. Goal kick for her. Looks like Cheyenne will go back and assist her here. Neo show playing a pretty high line, attacking. Again, knowing that they had the win, trying to keep that in their favor. This is a nice run here, though. Natalia found by Alia. Alia back to her, gets it to her. Now it's one on one. For the most part, Neo show bringing some other defenders over. She tries to make her move. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All the second half, Neosho County defenders not falling for those tricks. Cheyenne dumps it to Grace. Grace to Sherry. Sherry ahead to Katie. Katie to Tata. Tata tries to get it through that lane, but the Neosho defender did just enough to get a toe on that one. Cheyenne steps up. Or no, that was Sherry that stepped up. <laughs> There's Veronica. Oh, no, no mm. way. Yeah, she's not happy about that. I mean, come on now. Yeah. She tracked all the way back. Seemed like she had gotten that one clean, but mm -hmm. uh, won't complain too much. The, yeah. the foul is called. The free kick will happen. No yellow cards were involved, so it's always <laughs> good. Nobody was hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Shaky hasn't charged anybody. Yeah, no, he hadn't even... I don't think he's gotten up out of his seat for the second half, which is, you know, he's just chilling for right now. Good ball sent in. This is laid off and played to Tata. She tries to find... Yep, that's Veronica. Veronica will give Chase all the way back. Forces the goalkeeper into a bad kick. Possession to the Red Ravens. Long ball sent down for Neosho, but no one there to get on the end of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to think, though, with the wind as it is right now, it, couldn't, it may have honestly just been a normal ball instead of a long ball. Yeah, that's true. You always have that in the back of your mind whenever you have a situation like that. And as a player, I'm sure it's in the back of your mind as well. Yep, weather plays a major factor in, in this kind of situation. As Neosho tries to work it out here. This one is up, and it is not going to trouble Cat at all. Pause it down, and we'll set up for a goal kick. Oh, yeah, wow, that was a, a nice hustle Ow. play there from the Neosho County player. That that hurt me, and I'm and I don't, not even playing. Yeah, that one probably stung just a bit, but think about what she did there. Yep. Sacrificing herself for her own team. It's very impressive. Yeah, sending that message that, hey, we are not just going to lay back and let you pass yeah. freely. Yep. Coffee will throw in... Those Panthers are going to pounce at a point, any point in time. Yes, they might. They might. And you really do have to watch for that counterattack. Mm. Just when a team seems as if they have been, you know, lulled into just kind of playing defense, they might just counter and catch you sleeping. Uh, yourself as Kat gets her paws to this one. She's going to roll it out. Try to start something going here. Would have been a good bowling strike right there. Yeah. That's right down the middle. Mm. Finds Tata. She will make her way. She finds Natalia. This one is sent up and didn't quite get the curve that she wanted. 
Red Ravens quick to try to get onto that one, especially so deep into the box like that. And that it has been what the Ravens have been doing so far and in the first half as well. They've been on the uh, the enemy territory. Yeah, you're right. They've, I think the... I think the Panthers have only been in our territory maybe once or twice. Or maybe even thrice. Who knows? <laughs> thrice, you never know. As a, oh, okay, so actually, Tata doing a good job of letting everyone know, no, it is our throw in. Confusion down there, but side judge gets the correct call, and so here we go. Sherry. Oh, that was a nice touch. Ooh, just a little too much, but it's going to go over. That's going to stay with the Coffeyville Red Ravens. Neosho County not making it easy at all. Mm -mm. Which is what we like to see. Yeah, it's a good competition so far. Yeah. It's been a fair game. Both teams just uh, throwing their best, but just not landing. Yeah. It's a good turn. She's in distant space here. Gives it to Alia, but oh. just not... I pre I really enjoyed that right there. It, it looked like it was very good. There was a lot to enjoy with that play mm -hmm. right there. Just a step or two off. Seems like those two together in at the same time. There's a lot of speed, a lot of skill. And a lot of good playmaking as well. Yeah, no doubt about that. Ball high into the air. Two Red Ravens around it. Grace gets it. Grace to Veronica. She lays it off to herself almost. That was clever. Yeah. Good hustle there as well. Yeah, Veronica doing a good job of tracking all the way back. See, now see, if I played soccer, I'd be out of breath within the first half oh, because wow. I, I'm not used. I'm always, I'm a cross country runner. I ran distance and it was slow paced. But then at the last hundred or two hundred meters, your lungs are like giving out, for like, <laughs> and like you're not, your legs are tired. But then like for me personally, I just like let out a big old scream and it gave me a boot, boost of speed. That's why I was called the screamer. <laughs> I would be screaming and also crying. They would, <laughs> they would call me the crier uh, if I ever did cross country. But uh, good job here. I think that's Cheyenne that stepped up and just cleared that one out. She might not be happy that it uh, didn't meet someone or have someone on the end of it, but just really good for the defense just to get that one cleared. You know, so finding those passing lanes. You know, I've had a pretty busy week so far, Dirk. First, it was Wednesday with volleyball, and then today was soccer and football, yeah, American football. And here we go with a one-on-one. -on -one. She has a runner. Is she going to take it herself? She does, and a great save from Neosho County. Wow. Had a runner, still has the ball, still has some room. Tata gets a boot to it. It's going to fall for Veronica. Oh, Tried to catch it on the volley, just unable to. Heart racing oh. pace. Great save from the Osho County. She Indeed. has kept them in the game. My goodness. So far, like speaking of a Raven term, we have defended our nest. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. And that was an example of us attacking. Mm. Someone else's nest right yeah. there, or a den, if you will, because we are playing the Panthers. Do Panthers have dens? I think you they. Think? I think they may lay in trees or something. Okay, well, we'd like our stat people to look that up for yep. us. Uh, do Panthers have dens, or maybe they just like have living rooms? Or just, yeah, you know, just have a little like studio apartment. <laughs> yeah, just a little condo somewhere. Yeah. Uh, fancy footwork that will not find Veronica, but it looks as if the Red Ravens are energized just a bit. Uh, from the last sequence or two of plays where yeah. we've seen them make some really good uh, progress, which just has to be a handball, and it will. And, and you have to think, though, too, like it may have given them a boost of like motivation because like they didn't notice how close it was. They were going, oh, yeah, we, we, we know we can get in there and we can find the, the open woman or man if it's men's soccer and just go for it. Yeah, we can get in there. We can find them. It can be done. Because, yeah, Neosho has been a real stiff competitor tonight, but yes, it can be done. So they're going to work it around. This is Grace. But there, once again, you see Neosho defense stepping up at the right time. Cat gets a boot to this one, and it's going to hang out just a bit. Sherry given time to calculate it. Strike one. 
Crazy how that ball hangs up for Katie, but it does, and Riley makes a play on it. Back to Sherry. Sherry advances it. Not a bad ball at all, because Tata has speed. She can maybe even get to something like this or put pressure. Oh, wow, that ball just. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. That thing in the last, like, foot or two just, like, yeah. hung up, like, almost stopped. But, folks, if you could see the flag right now, like, it is blowing hard. So, yes. Wow. Okay, so this is a good goal kick here, but it will bounce around. Seventy-eight degrees outside is what I see. And, it, and the wind has died down a little bit, but still at a very fast 17 miles per hour with a humidity of 46%. Okay, okay. Ball is up and could be a dangerous one. Cheyenne, though, oh, wow, what a great touch. Kills that thing in flight, just falls at her feet. Forefoot leaves it for Natalia on the far side. She's always creeping over there, tries to find a streaking Tata -ta down the middle, but initial defense proving to be up to the task and the foul called will be a free kick for Neosho. Katie Burfoot found to be the culprit there on that one. And also they're like I kind of like that and being like being physical and like not not caring like how how your body's going to feel about it but <laughs> and, and making your team feel more successful. Yeah, that's a priority right there. And I, honestly Katie always is up for uh, putting her body on yeah. the line, I feel like. so. She's like the Matt Hardy of soccer. <laughs> this, oh, wow, I thought this was going to be a quick transition opportunity. But what we see is a foul called on the free kick. Referee saying that there was a lot of contact up in the air that the Inyosho player was shoved. Therefore, she earns that foul and the free kick. And in a very dangerous spot as well. Yes, it, it is. Uh, far enough out to where you can get the ball up and then down. Uh, it is not dead center. It's just off to the right. So that throws the uh, goalkeeper's vision off just a little bit. She's going to set up her wall. Uh, mm -hmm. Cat is up and oh, that's never going to bother her there. Yeah, thank goodness. But with 27 minutes left in this second half, something has to give, Steven. Something mm -hmm. has to motivate these Red Ravens to find a breakthrough. Who will it be? What will it be? When will it be? Veronica heads it down, gets it Good control. under control. Yeah, that was really cool. I, I'm very impressed at how well these, these players control the ball with just their feet, not having to use their hands like in volleyball or basketball we, or football as well. Yeah, and honestly, it's an it's an honest feeling for any American to feel that way who has never played soccer because, you know, all the sports we play has something to do with our hands. Yeah. Uh, even hockey, holding a stick uh, involves the hand-in-hand -hand movement. Uh, so we see great play down the field, and we also see the Red Ravens win a free kick. Alia quick to stand over this one, which means she wants – uh, to put this one into the back of the net. Now, she will have some options, but I think it's just basically... I would like to know personally who has the highest percentage for the Ravens on free kick goal percentage. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, that is a really good question, actually. We should uh, ask Shiki. Yeah, we could, and he might watch this later. He could get that yeah. to us as Alia puts this one up, and... Oh, that was on target. It forced mm -hmm. the goalkeeper to make a play, and... I don't know the leader, but she almost mm -hmm. put her name in the scorebook on that one. And Yosha's just going to kind of take their time here. Yeah. Walking this one out. Going to allow the players to get downfield and, and catch their breath as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. A lot of action in a short amount of time. Yosha player giving a really good run here. Wow. But then again, Kat has, Katarina has a cat like reflexes. Some confusion here. Ravens need to clean this one up, and it looks like they will. Sherry gets that one out. Tata sends this one up and to Grace. Grace with a great touch, and over to Julia. Julia keeps that one in. She gets it to Natalia. Natalia. Good, good hustle there by 
by the Red Raven player right there. Yeah, Mullins. Really Mullins, good yeah. Hustle. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Cheyenne Reed, uh, like we said earlier, over the back uh, call there. She's going to. That looked like it hurt. That, that hurt my brain up here. Whatever's left of it. That was absolutely bonkers right there. Bonkers, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. As the Neosho County player will line this one up, it is a good distance out, but you never know what might happen with the ball into the box and a couple of big bounces. As she is going to go for it, that is going to wow, 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 wow. That, that is going to force Cat to make a save, and if she had, if that were the kickball, she'd be out. Yeah, <laughs> if she had any doubt about that, Ooh. that could have been. Terrible. Oh, wow, Veronica showing some skill. Opens up the defense. That's she has some, runners. That's that's some Kyrie Irving moves right there. She has one-on-one -on -one here. She's going to make another move. She's going to, oh, get it into Alia. Alia turns. She's going to turn again. Wow, she had, mm, I don't know if Grace was onside or not, but, boy, she was begging for the ball. Sherry steps up, and if not, that would have been a free run for Neosho. Sherry again steps up. Looks like the Red Ravens cannot let down at this point. They should keep on going. Ball sent into the box. It's dangerous. A lot of action now. 23 minutes left in this second half. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Burfoot brings this one down. She gets it to Veronica. Veronica looks for a pass. Palmer to the middle of the field. There's Grace. Grace, uh, she's given room, so why not take it? And there's Veronica. Veronica sizes it up, and she sends it in. What a great ball. Wow. That was perfect, and that was turned in. Oh, oh been almost, some, a, almost a bicycle kick there. Would have been some Ronaldo. Yes, it would have, actually. That would have been very close to that. Oh, what a dangerous ball that was. It was dipping perfectly. I don't think that ball over there just wants to just sit down, take a little breather, grab a snack, just calm down a little bit. Over in the visitor section there. Yep, just keeps getting kicked around, and it and the ball didn't like it no more. It has had it. Yep. This ball is up into the air, and Tata gives us a, a jump, and that's Natalia putting a boot to it, and that is the Neosho County goalkeeper making a save. And as she does, she'll take her time. I will say this, though, about the Neo, Neo, Neo Show goalkeeper. She has been very – she's been all over. When, and to get back up so quickly and just like to just keep doing what she's doing, very impressive. I, I had to give her props. Yeah, that's true. As a mistake is made out on the field there, that is going to be headed back and out of bounds for a Neo Show corner kick. Their first one. Yeah, this half for sure as we see a substitute or two. Yeah, so one for uh, Coffeeville, one for Neosho. But Neosho making their way down to the uh, north end of the field to take this corner kick. Wind in their favor, you could say, but it's just been so unpredictable all night. Never quite know if it's going to swirl around and do something to that ball as this is sent near post cleared away chested down and up in the air Jerry gets ahead to it Tata does a good job of getting a touch to it and over to I think Riley Palmer and Riley finds Veronica now this opens things up just a bit uh, two on Three on about four or five there as that ball is going to be cleaned up by Neosho. Riley wins this one back momentarily. One thing you could also say about Neosho County uh, in their kits, their kit colors, mm. uh, every time around this, looks like a you know, yeah, it looks like Halloween, you know, so hey. Halloween. Not bad at all. So, have you figured out what you're going to dress up as for Halloween? Uh, uh, basic commentator. 
Okay. I mean, just basically what you're wearing tonight. Basically, yeah. You know, very good. Emily comes in. So this is the first action she has seen uh, tonight. Emily Padilla from Brazil. This is a long ball sent down, but will be dealt with by Cheyenne Reed and Cat Burns. Both sophomores tonight. Being sophomore night, last regular season home game. Not whoop quite whoop. sure if we will <laughs> not quite sure if we will host another game or not. We'll just have to see how the uh, season ends up for us and other teams as wow, this ball actually ends up at the feet of Alia. She tries to take it on the volley. Maybe not the best decision there, but can't blame her for trying. The uh -huh. keeper was out just a little bit. If she would have been able to guide that in the right direction, that could have gotten yeah. the back of the net. But uh, as we have it now, 25 minutes gone. Still no score line here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, Coffeyville, Kansas. It's been an exciting Saturday so far. Whoop, whoop. Her Trunk or Treat was a very big success, and as well as Raven Madness. Yeah, Trunk or Treat was. Uh, anytime you tell kids to be somewhere for candy, uh, <laughs> I think you're going to get a pretty good response, and mm -hmm. we did. Uh, Raven Madness was a basketball event where we had uh, both men's and women's team taking uh, part in different competitions. We had the fans as well, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Looking forward to basketball season. Me too. This is a good time of year for any sports fan because you have all these different sports uh, happening, going on, NHL, NBA, NFL, MLB, kind of all at the same time, which is, man, what a treat. As we see substitutions now, Alia will come off. Looks like Ashley Sweat comes on for her. And not quite sure who that is on the far side. Number 15. We will... Okay, so number 15. Reagan uh, Smith. Reagan Smith, very good. Way to be Johnny on the spot there with your monocular. Always comes in handy. It really does, uh, even though you look quite awkward uh, Oh well. looking through it. Um, it's like I've never been called awkward before, so. Well, but it, it's just maybe not awkward is the right word. It's just interesting, I would say, because even though it's a monocular, it's still working, you know, still doing its job overall. As the men's team makes their way out for some training, mm -hmm. uh, we will see them follow this game uh, 15 minutes or so after the conclusion of the game, which is... Oh, and that's into the box, and that is in the back of the net, folks. That is a really good corner kick that was taken and uh, found the forehead of... That Neosho player and right in front of the goal like that. Really nowhere else for it to go other than the back of the net, and that is exactly where it ended up. Neosho County, you could call them underdogs tonight. However, they are in the lead with 17 minutes left to go uh, in this second half. Sherry goes off, and Bethany Brogan comes on. That is a big blow there. We'll have to see the reaction from this Red Raven squad. We're going to need a big, big. Uh, is this one? Oh, sorry, guys. My train of thought went there. We're going to need a big reaction here. Because if not, this game will tick away before we know it. 16 minutes mm -hmm. left. No call there. The Neosho County player seems to be. Maybe exaggerating just a bit. Veronica trying to, you know, use her body to gain that position. That was almost like a Patrick Beverly move. Yeah, it right was there. actually. No, that's a really good call right there. Just someone who knows how to kind of use their body and doesn't mind to. Also like James Harden as well. Yeah, kind of get thrown to the floor and draw that foul as mm -hmm. uh, this is a free kick for Coffeyville. Playing it smart. Very good there. Yeah, that's true. Grace is going to turn, and we need an equalizer goal here, folks. Doesn't matter where it comes from. We need it. Reagan Smith makes her way in. Good move. Oh, she squares it. 
Wow, she almost had grace there, but Tata does get a boot to it. It was uh, a little bit too heavy on the boot. Yeah, she was. She did not get over that one there, just got under it, and it sailed on her a bit. Good sequence of plays, but just not mm -hmm. the ultimate result that we're looking for here. Neosho County certainly at this moment in time will take extra time to take free kicks to get people in position. Mm -hmm. The ball boys down there doing a wonderful job. Indeed, shout out to them. Shout it out to them. So goal kick is long and we'll go over to the Red Ravens. Headed up and brought down by Emily. Emily lays it off to Bethany. Bethany to Riley. Riley looking to run with it, and she will. Good hustle there by Riley. Yeah, she's making a good run, but, you know, probably keeping the ball for just a little too long, allowing the Neosho defenders to know exactly what they need to do. But they good, step up and they take it. But good defense there by that Red Raven player. She didn't leave her out of her Oh. And Bethany will get called for this one here now. She has not been in the game for very long. However, she will receive the first yellow card of the game. She's kind of asking, you know, why that call is happening. Seems like both players were going for the ball. Seemed like it was a somewhat innocent play, but it was probably more, you know, about the not only the physicality, but mm. how the player landed uh, as well. So uh, we will actually take just a short break here uh, as the Neosho County player is being tended to. Uh, she's up to her feet. Uh, we'll just take a quick break, uh, and we'll come back when the action on the field returns. Player is up, the player is off, and we will have a free kick for Neosho County. Prayers, prayers that she makes a quick early recovery, and that she, it, it, and thank God that they have player people there that are tending and taking, making sure that she's okay. Yeah, all parts of the squad are needed on every road trip. You know, the players, the coaches, and the medical staff, as well as <laughs> players finding it hard to keep the ball in one place. This wind is ferocious as 14:38. May have to do like what they did for football, get someone to hold it, or just kick it. And this, you know, just well, I guess she's trying to get it down the field. So strategically speaking, yeah, it needs to stay in one place, and it does for now. 14:38 uh, left in this second half. A surprise goal from Neosho sees them up, and here's another one. Wow. Goodness gracious, that was about as close as it could get. Mm -hmm. uh, Cat Burns, though, you have to give her credit for uh, knowing. With her cat like reflexes out there, making sure that it does not go in the goal. Yeah, again. And, and, and not getting a touch to it if she didn't have to. Uh, so, good decision there as Red Ravens looking to open things up here. There's a turn in the midfield. It will find. I think that's Emily. Emily to Veronica. Veronica is going to cut back into the inside. Veronica has been very impressive so far, hustling down the field, getting it to finding the right players. Yeah, I agree with you there. She's playing with a lot of pace uh, and a lot of skill. She has been a bright spot, no doubt about it, as Bethany sends this one down. Good header there. It'll bounce around, bounce around. Emily gets to it. She brings it down. 
Good job by Grace to step up. This ball pinging around really all over the place at this point. And this type of pace and this type of play will probably continue on into the very last whistle. Mm -hmm. Red Ravens are going to be constantly chasing this equalizer. Uh, and on the flip side of that, Neosho will be having to D up as much as they can uh, to stop anything. And, and honestly, yeah, I actually thought this initially. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that actually goes out for a corner kick. I think the Red Raven player thought that it was off of a Neosho player. And so if she let it go out, it would just be a goal kick. That is not the case. I did uh, too, honestly. Yeah, so it goes out for a corner, which gives them time to waste time. And also another dangerous position here. This one goes up and over. That will be a goal kick. Cheyenne Reed looks to get onto this one as quickly as possible. Time is not on the side of the Red Ravens at the moment. Substitution in. Looks like Smith will go out. Looks like Alia comes back in. So great looking options when it comes to the attack. And honestly, in my opinion, I'd get it to, if you're close to the Panther territory, right near the goal, I'd give it to either Tata or or Nalia. Or, is it Nalia? Uh, Alia. Alia. Yeah. Or even to maybe even Veronica. Yeah, and we see her making a run right now. She's trying to get something for her teammate. She puts it into the box. Oh, that's off the head. Oh, sometimes you just don't know the angles. Yeah. That was... Good pass, and she's going to win a corner kick for her team. Uh, you mentioned this earlier, a real bright spot for the Red Ravens mm -hmm. at the moment. This right-hand side of the attack opening things up, and that was a great cross into the box. Alias header might be the hardest play in yeah. soccer to make is to go up uh, and get your head to the ball, but not only get your head to it, but to put it where it needs to be. So against the wind... Your dad has to have like some really high jumps in order for you to get it, to get that head in. Yeah, that's true to get over that um, as well as we see the short option comes. Ball goes up and oh mm. man, Steven. If she was just a little bit quicker on that one, it would have possibly have been a Red Raven point. They had multiple players and the offsides flag did not go up. Thank goodness. Uh, so they were on side. They they had that chance. Mm -hmm. That far post was open for the taking. Ten minutes left. We do see a sub. This is Neosho County sub. I'd like to give a shout out to you, Dirk, on your volleyball skills on Wednesday as well. Volleyball. C yes. What do you mean, my friend? Just being there, man. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, and I think you and I have both learned a lot mm -hmm. about the sport. Indeed. Uh, you know, commentating and being there. And knowing uh, the right nicknames. <laughs> in that, getting to know the players, that's one of the, yeah. honestly, that's one of the best parts of the job. Uh, you're around them so much, even though yeah. you might not be face-to-face -face talking with them, you are around them, uh, and you are, you know, rooting for them, pulling for them. Yeah. And so you kind of create that bond, that relationship with them. They're going through it. You're going through it. You kind of mm -hmm. feel like you're in the same boat. And, and now that uh, I'm on our honorary member, I feel like I am a, like, a part of their team physically and mentally. Yeah, which I'm sure they really appreciate as they still have some season left to play. And uh, they'll be banking on that support for sure. Mm -hmm. Less than 10 minutes left in this one, though, folks. We are down to it in Neosho County. You know, really, Stephen, this second half has been a defensive master class yes. uh, from Neosho County. They have really stifled any Red Raven plan toward goal, but it might just take a broken play to bring him back. Tata gets it onto her right foot. She sends it in, and wow. Ooh. She might have had the goalkeeper yeah. beat on that one. She, If it was a little bit like more at an at a different angle, it possibly would have been a goal. But. Yeah, and, and so what we see now is a corner kick. I did not realize there was a deflection, so yeah. uh, this is big we'll for take it. Yeah, we will take it. Uh, and the wind is 
blowing, I feel like, in the favor of the Red Ravens. It's going to take a special play, but we've got it in us. Let's see. And it's in. It's good. Goal. That's Cheyenne Reed getting in uh, on that one there. Equalizer. It is in the books. I had a good feeling about that corner right there, Steven. And it is a goal. Goal. Woo. Hey, wow, 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 wow. And there's the corner goal. kick taker. There is the goal scorer. And appropriately, it is a sophomore putting it in. Shy and Reed. Wow, that changes the game. Ryan Butcher, where are you at right yes, now? Yes, indeed. Where are you? But here we are, Veterans Memorial Stadium with a score line of 1-1. And I just had that feeling that this is going to pump both sides up. Yes, indeed. Uh, this might not end 1-1. We still have a lot of time. Both teams are going to want to put something in the back of the net. And here we go. Here we go. Nice turn. Good ball. Sophomore night. It's a special whoop, night whoop. for these players, not only the sophomores, but the freshmen as well. They want to get them this victory. Veronica continuing her run on this right-hand side. Can she get it into the box? She does not. And it's going to go out of bounds. Yeah. And, but you do have to like that play, that hustle right there. Yeah, because, like, for... Like for so do you have any the nicknames for any of the soccer players? I mean, for the females, because I know for the men, I have two of them. Yeah, you know, I guess. Uh, I mean, I guess not per se. I, I don't know. Um, for volleyball, I have uh, there's Soraya Fort Sumter, Sarah Madman Matson, <laughs> Megan Megaphone Powell, yeah, and then Maya White, aka Dynamite. Yeah, I, you know, I you're just you, you do such a good job of coming up with those names. Yeah, I think you just. Uh, you're like the king of that as mm. Neosho, you know, they're still here. They're still in this game. They're yeah. going to try to make something happen in this last seven minutes. Great job by Bethany to step up, and she could start something here. Good hustle there by Bethany as well, as well as the Neosho defender coming back there to get that. Yeah, that's true. And uh, Neosho having to just kick this one out of bounds. Five minutes, nope, six minutes left to go. Emily brings it down, finds Tata. Tata, oh wow, nutmegs her and would probably like to get a call right there. She's being mm -hmm. dragged down from the back. Alia. Because they know because they know how, of what she's capable of. That's true. They know about that turn and mm. just how dangerous it can be. So no, I totally agree with you there as Grace trying to find Alia on that left hand side but will not as it will be a throw-in for the Panthers. Booted there by the one of the Panthers. Bethany gets it back. Kicks it up to... And finds Tata. Yep, Ravens with possession, and Grace picks up on this one. Emily. This is Alia. Alia back and ball sent forward. Not a bad ball. It all hangs mm -hmm. up. Got some hang time up there. Hang time. And that one's going to probably go all the way out. Cat having to really give chase. Like a cat chasing a ball of yarn like or a, a laser pointer. Like a little like uh, mice on a string mm. you know, type little. Yeah, drives me crazy. You know, cats apparently also like hair ties. Is that right? Yeah, you just tie it on a string and they'll play with it for hours. The things my mom does with our cat. I figured that's how she babysat you back in the day. Oh, yeah, you definitely. Know, keeping you, uh, yeah. <laughs> keeping you entertained. And this ball's going to so leak out and... Just give me some food and I'll be entertained for yeah, a couple of minutes. Yeah, I hear you there. <laughs> uh, Ashley brings this one in. She's going to start this attack. She has... And that's a good ball to Veronica on the right-hand side, which has been a vocal point for attack. Tata, she's going to put this ball into the box. And, oh, my gosh, there's a player right in the middle. Oh. But there, I think there was a foul there as well. Well, man. Was there no foul there called? No foul called. Oh, my goodness. How is there not a foul called there? That was a crazy sequence of plays, mm. folks. There was a Red Raven player right there. Yes, the defense did enough. Four minutes left, and 
Overtime is looking imminent, my friends. Overtime uh, may be of the essence. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's a golden goal uh, overtime, oh. so whoever scores first will get the victory. It may be their goal in order to win. That should be their main goal. Mm. <laughs> this ball sent forward. It hangs up like a poster in your dorm room. Ah. Or a deer rack, or a deer rack hanging up on your wall. Well, after you know season. Yeah. Throw in here for Neo Show. Three minutes left. Tries to turn, but will not be able to. And uh, no foul is deemed there. Uh, Mullins just doing her job. This is a throw in. Good spin move there by the by the official. <laughs> he knows a thing or two. Oh yeah. This is Emily. Good defense by her. Oh, but that's a good pass to open it up. Bethany comes over. There's a shot, but that is not going to trouble Cat at all. Three minutes left in this second half. This is going to be end-to-end -end football until the final whistle. Here's mm -hmm. Ashley Sweat. She will look for Alia. Alia cut out on her run. Ball over to Coffeyville. Three minutes Less than three minutes, actually. Mm -hmm. Ooh, good turn by Grace. Grace uh, gets it to Alia. This is promising here, folks. Mm -hmm. Alia has runners in the middle. She needs to probably find them. Oh, but good hustle there. The box. Oh, oh, my goodness. My goodness. Wow. Oh. That was the perfect oh, run, it, folks. It goes. But. Oh, the flagman over there looked like it was pointing it for the Ravens, but it goes towards Panthers You instead. are exactly right. At first I was like, oh, no, there was a touch. But, uh, yeah, that might be the last chance for the Red Ravens this second half. Mr. Butcher would get mad at me for saying something like that, so I better watch myself. But uh, we find ourselves in our attacking third. Ashley Sweat with it. She... Wins the throw in. Less than two minutes left. Ha! <laughs> she says a little something to the line judge. Uh, won't sway his opinion. It'll still be a throw in. No sweat. <clears throat> no sweat. You're right. Back to. Ooh, and that's dangerous. Yeah, but good, good reflexes there by the goalkeeper there for the Panthers. Yes, and they will take the goal kick. It'll be up, and it's going to take a big old bounce, folks. Might as well just let it go all the way back to Cat. Cat has it. Cat scoops it. Cat gets it out. Bethany Brogan. Riley Palmer. Riley turns and sends it forward. Uh, good defense from Neo Show. 57 seconds and counting. Good work by the ball boy down there. A lot of hustle from him. Shout out. Shout out to him. Whoop, whoop. Yo show. That is Tata. Tata to Ashley. Ashley tries the side of the boot to Alia, but nothing going. Cat comes out. She'll get this. She'll look to quickly get it back out. 27 seconds and counting. 26, 25. Just hanging on to it for the most part. It's a dangerous throw out. This is something that we definitely can't have here as far as teams coming together and arguing. Well, and so amongst all the arguing and the tussle, the second half is going to... Uh, play itself out. Uh, that means that we will have over overtime. Yeah, overtime football. So, but it looks like the men are already getting out there and getting a little practice. Yeah, I don't quite know what they're thinking, uh, unless we are not aware of something that they are aware of. Yeah, I thought uh, they're just keeping themselves warm. So 
So, folks, we're just kind <laughs> of hanging uh, tight here to get an official ruling. Uh, yeah, the men are out on the field, but I – yeah, they're going to get called off. Uh, they should know what a 1-1 one -one score line yeah. means, but uh, <laughs> maybe they aren't quite sure. Maybe they just kind of uh, you know, want to get used to the turf out there. You never know. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so extra time here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. I guess if you love soccer uh, and it's sophomore night and you just don't want to play uh, that last game, hey, why not? Yeah. Why not some overtime here? I've been so used to call, calling volleyball games and, like, going into different sets and, like, going up to 25 instead of, like, very low-scoring game like soccer or hockey or anything like that. But so far, it's been pretty fun. I've enjoyed every single minute of soccer as well as you probably have enjoyed as much as more than I have. But in my mind, I've always been a volleyball fan and basketball. But now I'm leaning a little bit more towards soccer as well. It's good to hear, Stephen. Yeah, and, you know, the, the more you know. Indeed. Uh, you know, the more you understand, and then it becomes more enjoyable overall. When you don't know what the heck's going on, yeah, it's kind of hard to uh, enjoy that overall. Uh, yeah, and volleyball is a game where points are constantly being scored. Uh, soccer is a game where points are hardly uh, ever <laughs> scored. So you're, you're exactly right when it comes to, like, the contrast. Uh, of the two games, and I guess just coming to an appreciation uh, of the of the contrast, you know what mm -hmm. I mean, of what makes them uh, similar, but then also what makes them uh, different overall. So, yeah, soccer is much more, oh, you know, just grind it out. Mm -hmm. And also and a lot more physical, too, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's something interesting about volleyball is... They have a uh, net there to provide protection. There you go. So there's not a lot of physicality. Not saying that you're not going to, you know, roll your ankle or twist a knee yeah. or maybe even bump your head or something like or that. Or get blocked by Soto, who says no, no. She says no, no uh, for the low, low. But, mm. uh, <laughs> yeah, so. For the it, show, show. It's interesting, the, the contrast. And uh, just, yeah, we, we love both sports and we love yeah. both teams. And uh, we now see the Red Ravens coming back out on the uh, field. They're all dapping each other up. They're all, you know, Oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's do one dap. Let's, let's do one, Dirk. We can go ahead and dap up as well. Yes, sir. Uh, give me some skin there, Steven. Very good. Um, yeah, so we'll see, you know, the intensity from each of these sides. We know that it's a golden goal situation, so it's not as if you could just, you know, tell yourself, oh, okay, well, we'll just kind of play it cool and then try to get them eventually. No, it's you got to get them now. So, yeah, and uh, now we also have the win back in our favor as well with, in, as the uh, overtime is underway. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we'll see if that factors in. Uh, as we see in the Osho, though, on the front foot to begin with. Wow, that's a really good ball, and it is... Good defense there by the Ravens. Yeah, that had to happen there. If not, that would have troubled Cat in the goal at the mm. very least. Uh, this ball is up and out and over to Coffeeville. Try to do some hurdle work. Boy, I would not make it over one of those hurdles. That would not be fun for anyone. But if it all. was for food, I would definitely give give my best shot. <laughs> we'll work for food. We'll jump hurdles uh, yep. for food. We will run miles. Uh, Grace sends it to Tata. Tata sends it to Riley, and this will start a run for the Red Ravens. She also has Veronica. Veronica giving fits to all of the defenders in that second half. And this is a good ball squared up. Going to take a couple deflections, and it falls to Ashley. Oh, my gosh, folks. Go! Ashley Sweat <laughs> for oh my goal. Gosh. That is one of the best goals I have ever seen. She took that off the volley, and that is exactly the type of skill uh, she has. How appropriate on sophomore night. Sophomores get both goals, and they – Make us wait just a little bit yeah. for the victory, but nonetheless, we get the victory. Wow, Ashley Sweat, sophomore. Florida. She knew what she she knew what she had to do, and she fully committed to it, one hundred percent, and got Ravens the Ravens the victory. Stephen, you I, I could not have said that any better. She knew exactly what she had to do, and she did it. Oh 
My goodness. Well, so, hey, folks, you just watched a, a thriller of a game, an excellent game overall. Uh, that will conclude the women's game. 2-1 scoreline into overtime. Now, folks, hang tight. Uh, 15 or 20 minutes or so uh, will start the men's game, and it is going to be another great one overall. So for Stephen, the mouth of the southeast, you know it. Uh, and Dirk Andrews, we're going to take a quick break, but see you in about 20 minutes, folks. See you then. Peace.
good evening, Red Wings. What a sophomore night victory that was. Give him another hand. The Coffeeville Red Raven women's team would like to recognize all sophomores tonight. So let's take a chance to get to know each one and give them a hand. First up, Grace Higgins. Grace Higgins is a defensive midfielder. She was second team all conference with 12 conference starts. Her favorite memories have been celebrating the wins with her team. Once again, Grace Higgins. Next up, Valentina Val Verghese. Valentina is a forward midfielder. Some of her stats include 45 games played, one goal, and one assist so far this season. Some of her favorite memories when we beat Cali and overall beating Butler at the last minute in her first season. Ladies and gentlemen, Val. Next up, defender Riley Palmer. Riley Palmer has had one goal and has also kept a 4.0 GPA. One of her favorite memories is when we won against Cali this year. Ladies and gentlemen, Riley Palmer. Next up, Kaisley Elias Gonzalez. A forward who has managed to keep a GPA higher than 3.5 while playing and being able to score collegiate goals in both of her seasons. Her favorite CCC memory was when Coach Shiki fell with his coffee because of the strong wind. Ouch. Once again, Kaisley Elias Gonzalez. Next up, Alessandra Ali Thompson, goalkeeper. Ollie has kept a 4.0 GPA and four shutouts this season. Her favorite memory beating Callie and celebrating with a dog pile at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, Ollie Thompson. Next up, midfielder Katie Burfoot. Katie has scored six goals in her career and assisted three. Her favorite memory, celebrating our 2-3 win against Cali and watching the men beat them 4-1 after. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Burfoot. Next up on the prowl, Cat Burns. Goalkeeper. Conference second team academic All-American. She's enjoyed every second with her teammates and there's not a better team out there to go through all the ups and downs with. One of her favorite memories stopping KCKS unbeaten season would have been one of my favorite moments here. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Cat Burns. Next up forward, Alia Hadi. She has seven goals in her first semester First team all-conference in KJCCC All-Region. One of her favorite memories, beating Barton last season 2-1 in overtime and helping the team win against Cali 3-2. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Alia. Next up, CB Sherry Saad. She made vice president's honor roll was a first team all-conference freshman. One of her favorite memories, victory celebration after proving other teams wrong. From the back defensive line, Sherry Saad. The winning goal scorer tonight, midfielder, forward, Ashley Sweat. Second team all-conference. Her favorite memory is scoring the game winner in overtime versus Hutch, but she might have just made a favorite new memory tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashley Sweat. Next up, center midfielder, Abigail Moss. Abigail's favorite memory, winning in only 10 seconds of overtime under the floodlights here at home against Metro last year. 
Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Abigail Moss. Next up, right back, Katerina La Mama Mia. 32 games as a starter, five assists and one goal. Favorite CCC memory, first conference game one, 1-0 one against Johnson in Coffeyville. Once again, Katerina. Next up, center back, Shy Cheyenne Reed. Some of her stats and accomplishments, Defensive Player of the Year, first team and all region, 47 games played, 46 games started, three goals, ooh, four goals, and four assists. Favorite CCC memory, beating KCK freshman year and beating Bartman, or Barton in overtime. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheyenne Reed. Last but not least on my list, folks, Julia, a.k.a. Gucci Mullins. Center back and left back. She has two assists this season and was a part of the first ever season sweep of KC teams. Played a total of 16 games, 11 conference. Some of her favorite memories when we were all at Shiki's house for team bonding and everyone was super comfortable just singing all together. Once again, let's give a hand to Julia and all the sophomores tonight. Now, Coach Shiki would actually like me to read some of his comments. This is a truly special group of young ladies. The types of adversity that we have endured together has formed a bond that will last forever. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be your coach. Andrea, Layla, Rosalind, and I love and thank you for being a part of our extended soccer family. To any parents who may be watching right now, unable to attend, we thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to work with your kids. They truly are great. And to Lacey Gonzalez, you have been a huge part of all of the success we've had. We'd be lost without you. Thanks, girl. Special thanks to assistant coach Selinka. You're amazing and I am so grateful to have you in the program. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2022 sophomores, once a Raven, always a Raven. Let's get this second victory, folks. This should be interesting. 